The evaluation asks a whole number of questions. It analyzes the technology, analyzes the training and support, but the key question is it asks, it's a very simple one, is do the scenarios being tested have the potential to transform education in a positive way? Can they change teaching and learning practice? And we use as a baseline assumption that what we're looking at is improving teacher competencies, ensuring that young people develop 21st century skills. So do these scenarios, in fact, can they measurably help young people develop 21st century skills in comparison to what's happening in the classroom at the moment? Evaluating innovation is really a challenge. <laughs> evaluating in general is really a challenge. But innovating innovation, you basically from the beginning do not know what you will have to evaluate, against which criteria, because it's supposed to function in the future, and perhaps even more concrete, when do you plan such time of evaluation of innovation? Innovation is supposed to be a continuous process, so where to stop the picture and take the measure about what has been achieved? This is a real challenge. And even the amortization is neglected there. But these are somehow by the public uh, 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 supported and recognized needs, which means that the politician can come, that the roof is leaking, uh, 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 we have to change the uh, uh, windows, etc., etc., and it will have a support. But even 15 years ago, those needs, which uh, 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 which were represented by an ICT development, they were not recognized needs by the public because they did not use these uh, uh, devices. They were not connected to the web. Therefore, the inertia of the of the political uh, uh, motivations to push the politicians towards the direction not to take care for these things. So it's a real problem how to make how to make an integral part of the yearly budgeting those needs which are needed here. And we know, we see now that the ICT equipment's uh, uh, financial amortization cycle is about between three and six years. There seems to be a tension between technology and pedagogy in the sense that we are seeing a number of, of innovations being driven rather by technology than pedagogy, uh, which is something which is, uh, it's, it's happening. <coughs> you, can't, you can't make it go away. These scenarios, of course, should be practical but also creative, innovative, and visionary. That's a very difficult thing to get right. And that's one of the big challenges I think the project has. And again, I go back to this idea of reflection and consolidation. I think schools who are now tending towards an e-maturity have to take stock. And many, many schools are in that position. And again, this will allow them to face the next three years with more confidence. Some characteristics. It is experimental. It has an experimental nature. It's based on experimentations, very problem uh, oriented, looking into the whole system, really, what is happening today in those classrooms, real life experimentations that provide evidence. It's carried by the users, which means the learners and the teachers, in the sense of bottom up. But there is the, the top-down, uh, the meeting of top-down needs with possible pilots. And what is quite new is that policy experimentations is very often uh, limited to one region or to one country. We would like to go to peer learning between those countries, not real comparison between the countries, but that the countries can learn from each other's pilots in terms of policies and that there is a European-wide cooperation in policy development.